So yes, it's easy to lose yourself in the vast jungles of Pandora, but that doesn't mean it has to be difficult. That's why today we're gonna take a look at the most important tips and tricks you absolutely need to know to tame the western frontier. From how to always get the best mats, become super strong early, and way more, so let's dive right in. First things first, focus on getting skill points right away. Now, in this game, you don't actually get XP, but rather you get skill points by just following the main story and completing side content. However, to fast track that, there are a few things that you can do, and the biggest of them is to pay attention to the Tarsus saplings. There are dozens of these all across the map, you can easily see them from far away. And by the way, for these, as well as the items I'm gonna cover after this, pay special attention to the light shafts that appear on the screen. So this is going to indicate there's one of these nearby, and all you have to do is to just pan the camera until you turn it into a circle, and then this is going to let you pinpoint its exact position. So each one of these will provide you a skill point, for example, but um, sometimes you might find them underground. What this means is that they are likely inside of a cave, so pay close attention to your surroundings, usually there should be an entrance close by. This will help you a ton as you're going to want to increase your damage, survivability and even the carry capacity via the default skill tree. But besides this, another very similar resource is going to be the Bell Springs. You can find these again in a very similar way. And what they do is they increase your HP permanently. So they look like this. They also emit some of these um, green haze. And you're going to definitely want this for the extra survivability. And finally, there's one more thing you're going to want to search for, which is the Ancestor skill. So there are multiple of these, about a dozen or so. Some of them you can pinpoint right from the start of the game, while the others you will have to find naturally by playing. But this is going to give you some unique abilities that are a complete game changer. Stuff like being able to survive for longer, falling from much higher spaces, even dealing more damage, or just interacting with the game in a lot of cool ways, or even bonding with your ecran a lot better. So you will always want to search out for these three right here so that you can gain a massive character boost. Moving on to number two, hunting and gathering is something that you're going to do a lot of as you will need this to craft food, to get buffs, to craft some of the best gear. So here are some of the best practices for that. First of all, Hunter's Guide is your best friend. Not only does this let you pin any material or any creature right there for you to easily hunt, but it's going to give you all the info you need, both where as well as how to collect these. So pay attention to the biomes, especially for the rare variants, as you can bring this up on the map by pressing C on the keyboard or the equivalent on the controller. And this is going to let you more easily see a breakdown of the map with each specific biome, which is going to let you more easily pinpoint any wildlife or any wild plant you might be looking for. And speaking of collecting plants, unfortunately, after the first five or six pickups, you're going to notice that tooltip completely disappearing and never coming back again. And from this point on, you will have to rely visually on how your hand moves. So to make this easy and always get pristine condition while plants, you're going to want to pay attention to not have your hand shaking. Best way to explain it is to hold down the button pressed on the mouse or on the controller and only gently move your cursor to the sides. If you notice that your hand is shaking, that's not the proper spot. Try to move around a little bit until you notice your hand is no longer trembling. And once you do that, simply rip it out and this is going to usually give you a pristine condition item. But also pay attention to the second condition, be it by getting it during the day, during the night or under rainy conditions, whichever of these is listed. Because if you also get that, you get a full maxed out item and this means you can craft the best possible gear out of it or craft the best possible food for the maxed stats available. At number three, let's talk about hunting, and this also requires precision. This is why, again, try to bring that creature view and check exactly where its weak points are. You're going to want to take down these creatures as fast as possible in their weak points so that you don't just not ruin the meat, but also get the best possible variant of it. So usually you can just use your hunter senses to spot those weak points, but also try to use an appropriate weapon for it, especially if it tends to have a ton of HP. So early on, the spear throw can be a very good variant instead of the heavy bow, as this can one-shot even some of these pristine condition creatures. 
just to show you how big of a difference it can be taking a completely pristine with a quick kill and mercy kill creature its hide and its resources are significantly better even than one that took only two hits to take down but this is going to progressively get ruined more and more with the more hits you need to take down those creatures and even more so with the types of weapons so obviously grenades will completely ruin them at number 4, under no circumstance should you leave your clan favor, which is the circular vine right here, filled because you're just missing out on buying items for absolutely free. So this is going to naturally fill up by just completing side missions for each specific, well, tribe, and I'm also donating resources, more on that in just a little bit. But eventually, if you see this filling up quite a bit, or it's close to filling up completely, go ahead at any of the vendors in the home tree and get any of the resources right there. As you'll notice, these will cost that favor that you just got and they can be very useful. Like you can get some very strong weapons or armors or even mods early on that will definitely make you a lot stronger and make the challenges ahead much easier. So not only do these items have a favor cost, but as you progress in the game, new items of much better quality will appear, so you will definitely want them. Which is why I'm going to show you a few methods to quickly farm this favor. One of the best is by just donating to the community basket. This is going to be done via the community contributions mission, which eventually starts by default anyway. Each and every single tribe will have their own with multiple parts that will require giving out progressively to more of their encampments. So in this case, it only requires some basic materials, usually like even fruits early on, but it doesn't just increase that favor. It also gives you extra items, like you could give a fruit, for example, and get a very strong bow out of it. That's why you'll want to pay special attention to these small encampments. Each and every single tribe will have like a dozen or so of these that you can unlock as fast travel points, but also places to make these contributions. And once you do that, you're going to notice that a check mark will appear above that destination. So you will know that you're finished with that. From this point on, you can just look for others that you have currently missed. Also, by the way, scattered around these maps, as well as the bigger camps, you're going to find all kinds of gift baskets, absolutely always collect them. You might even encounter, for example, a material in one of these that might be required for some of those contributions, but that material might be very difficult to get, so it did help me on quite a few occasions. Another way to do this in is by just doing all of the side missions inside of these areas, inside of these camps. You can either grab them manually by visiting these NPCs or doing it from straight up the map menu. Usually they are pretty fun to do, but they can provide even more items, resources, and especially that favor. And finally, the last thing you're going to want to do is also to the contribution basket, but in this case, not the required items, instead any item that you don't use. So instead of throwing items away and wasting them, the ones that go unutilized or completely overleveled, you can simply donate them at the home tree. And this is going to progressively fill that vine even more. It's going to be on a smaller scale, but as you just give in more and more items, it's going to be worth it because you can then funnel that into acquiring something new and much more powerful from the vendors. And speaking of vendors, absolutely always pay attention to their second tab called Design. This is usually going to give you blueprints to craft your own gear and they will usually always have one and if they don't, they will get some in additional levels as you progress in the game and whatnot. At number 5, the next important resource to pay attention to is spare parts. This is something that you're going to need both to craft certain specialty ammo, but even more important, to buy RDA gear. So this is going to be back at the RDA HQ at the start of the map. There are many items including weapons and armors that you can buy from this location. So you will always find these from the RDA spots, so this includes the mining rigs, the big outposts, even like the smaller encampments, you should usually see them with the um, brownish or so tint on the map because it also spreads pollution in those areas. And you will always want to grab these because, yeah, there are a ton of these chests laying around. But uh, besides this, you can also find random smaller camps around the map, all you have to do is to just listen to your surroundings and if there's any gunfire you might happen to hear nearby. Usually this brings you to a bunch of these enemies fighting in there, but if you defeat them, they also have some of these resources laying around like 99% of the time. 
At number six, as we were talking about outposts, absolutely under no circumstance leave any enemy to raise the alarm. Whenever you see that appearing over their head, go ahead and take them down right away. And that is because if the alarm gets raised at the end of it, you're going to only get about half of the resources and rewards you normally get by completing it. So there are two ways to do this in, either go in full stealthy and completely sabotage that without ever being detected. This is going to immediately finish that and despawn the enemies or take everybody down before they get a chance to do anything, including raising the alarm. And at the end of it, you're going to notice that every single one of the containers is going to be unlockable. So you can get extra items, resources, and it's a much better way to just progressively get better. Now, combat-wise, it's not going to be that difficult as you're going to get better loot and better upgrades. However, there are a few things that you can do early on to more easily deal with the bigger mechs. So one of them is to definitely use the Trap Thrower. This is one of the best ways to one-shot them completely, even if they are slightly over-leveled. So what this does is that it can take down even multiple of them at the same time if you do manage to group them up or if you notice that they are grouping up. Also, like just using explosive barrels in the environment helps with that quite a lot. However, I also noticed that the shotgun in particular is very strong against the mechs. Early on, the bows didn't really do it for me that much and even using it against their weak points sometimes did not one-shot them as much as the shotgun does and maybe that's because they were a bit overleveled, but the shotgun doesn't really have that problem. Now, you can also hack these enemies to disable them. In the case of the turrets, that's a permanent disable. So whenever you get close to one, definitely make sure you disable them right away. Otherwise, they are quite annoying. They do 360 degree spins. So the moment they notice you, you kind of don't have much to survive, at least early on. And yeah, there's one more thing I want to talk about here, and that is that you can quickly switch ammo type by pressing control on the keyboard so that you don't have to constantly manually switch from the mini menu. This is going to be much faster and um, it's going to be a bit different for you if you play on the controller, but you should see the prompt right beneath the ammo type right there. Now, moving on to number eight, food is very important in this game. In fact, your character can go hungry, but food is also good at giving you a quick regeneration plus some massive, massive stats. So if your character goes hungry, you will notice this by that small HP bar at the bottom of the screen. What this means is that if it goes empty, your character will no longer auto regenerate the longer green HP bar on top of this. But um, if you eat something, even if it partially fills the bar below, this is going to be enough to regenerate that bigger bar above even a few times. However, there are bigger reasons to craft food. So especially if you just use a bit of carnivore meat and some of the early on fruits, if you got these with the pristine condition, you can get an absolutely massive buff 50% to both HP as well as damage, which can be much, much better than anything else you can get in the early stages. And if you got them with a pristine condition, you can also have them last for a lot longer. That's why I highly suggest to always have food readily available. But besides this, there's also the double fat pods. You find these all over the place. And essentially, these are your urgency healing. You will always want to have these readily available. So whenever you see these two leaves being empty, the ones very next to that green HP bar, always try to collect at least a few of these until you are fully filled, as this is going to let you instantly replenish that HP, especially if you happen to be pinned down in combat and don't have any means of escaping, but also don't want to die. And by the way, speaking of healing up and eating, your Ikran can also do that by itself. By just skimming over water, it's going to automatically fish any creatures from beneath and it's going to eat them right away, giving you a nice boost in the process. At number 9, your pouch is going to eventually run out of space. You definitely don't want that. You definitely don't want to be in a position to throw out items to make room for other ones. That's why I absolutely go to any of the stashes at any of the home trees or any other um, you know, type of encampment, but usually add these as you can just place especially the resources and materials inside. And these are, by the way, shared between all of your stashes. So even if you go in a different region at a different clan, you're still going to find them in the same stash and you can retrieve them very easily. 
And finally, to number 10, a few extra tips that didn't necessarily make it to a spot of their own. A, you can just rest at any bonfire, which is going to let you advance the time in game. This is especially useful if you have to hunt for specific things during night or during the day. And second of all, you can totally, completely recustomize your character by going to any of these customization stations, usually found very close to one of the home trees or inside of it. This is going to let you completely recustomize that character, including voice, face and everything plus this is also how you can get access to some of the face paints and other customization options you unlock by completing extra missions for the clans and that is pretty much it with avatar frontiers of pandora more coming soon so if you want to see more content like this on the channel make sure you leave a like on the video subscribe and activate that notification bell thanks so much for watching and until next time